See you in heaven. Unless this stunt sends me to hell instead. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. I create them with fleeky visuals, dipped in artificial love. In this nuclear revenge story, a boy loses his mother, leaving him with his hard-working dad. While coping together, a beam of love re-enters their life, so it seemed. As the dad introduces, stepmom. But it wasn't long, before tragedy reappeared, and the dad passed away. Leaving the son with heartbreak once more. While in mourning, the boy needed to share his grief and loss. While his stepmom was the closest, she wasn't fond of any form of sharing. So, she shamelessly walks away with the whole inheritance, and the house. Leaving the hurt boy alone, with nothing to show for. Before we start, give your evil stepmom a chocolate heart for Mother's Day, but make sure, you've kept it in your warm pants for at least 4 hours. Let's dive, into this truly exhilarating revenge story. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. This revenge act, might be disturbing to evil stepmoms. I'm from China. But I live in the US. My mom died giving birth to me, so I never knew her. She looks really pretty in pictures. My dad tells me she was a good woman, and I believe him. He was a good dad to me, and raised me by himself with the help of my aunt, until I was 11. My aunt has her own kids that are a few years older than me, but we were all friends growing up and still are, which includes my aunt. Like my mom, my aunt is a good woman. My dad worked crazy long hours to provide for me. He owned his own convenience store. He was a manager and cashier for most of the day, and had one other employee as his helper. I was just a kid, but would also help at the store after school, sweeping and stocking shelves. For the longest time, my dad's helper was a Chinese guy. But then he had to quit, because he had to take care of his ailing parents in China. So my dad replaced him with a Western guy, who did okay for a while, but then he graduated college and moved on. Finally, my dad hired a Chinese woman to be his helper, and this woman would eventually become his second wife and therefore, my stepmom. I will call her Barbara, though her name isn't actually Barbara, of course. Barbara was only 15 years older than me, she was 26. So she was a lot younger than my 44-year-old dad. She also didn't speak Chinese with the same dialect. This was inconvenient for our convenience store, because we lived in a Chinese part of town where most of the customers were Chinese Mandarin. She spoke English, but those customers would rarely visit us, just once in a while. So this wasn't a big advantage in any way. Barbara was nice to me at first, so I thought she was a good person. I was not 12 yet, when they got married and she moved into our house. From what I know about her, her family is quite wealthy in China, and they paid for a nice wedding and they all came to America for it. My dad was the sort of guy, who kept on working like a maniac every day. Once they got married, Barbara changed, at least toward me. She was no longer the big sis, like she tried to portray herself when she and my dad were dating, where she treated me as a peer but now she was super strict and controlling. She no longer let me help out around the shop like before. It's not like Cinderella, where the mom would force the kid to do all this work, but she did tend to isolate me from my father. Over the next few years, she convinced my dad to sponsor all sorts of her relatives and friends, to come over from China to live in America. He would set these people up with businesses because, even though my dad wasn't rich, he was very bright and knew how to make money. They would open little restaurants, dry cleaners, cell phone repair shops, things like that. Pretty much all the little foreign mom and pop shops you see in any small town, my dad helped make those things, except the owners were Chinese guys. When I was 17, my dad developed lung cancer due to smoking heavily, ever since he was 13. He died just two years later at only 52. When I was a kid, I always had in mind to take over my dad's store when he would retire. Now that I was 19, I was still too young to sell liquor, but I thought surely Barbara will let me work in the store now that my dad was gone. No such luck. She had one of her adult cousins take over the store, and the guy hired only his own friends and family to work in it. So, the store my dad built from nothing, was no longer part of my life. Barbara also had my dad fix his will, so that she got almost all of his money, which again, although he wasn't Bill Gates rich, was several hundreds of thousands of dollars. I didn't really care about the money, Barbara can have it but it still sucks she got all his money while her family is already rich. I think she was just using my dad to transport her clan from China to America, but that's just my theory. All the money in the world, 
couldn't bring my dad back, and I'd rather have that than cash, but I digress. However, after saying all that, I will admit, my dad set aside a small trust for me that was enough to put me through junior college. Also, the second I turned 18, Barbara threw me out of the house. The same house my dad bought and paid for with his hard work. She told me, and I'll never forget it. This is not a place for you. You go now. Bye bye. She owned it because she was his wife. And now that my dad passed, Barbara could move her new boyfriend into the house in his place. Her new boyfriend was a big, fat scumbag from Taiwan, who from what I hear was big shot mobster in his home country, but in America he just played mahjong all day and lived off his wife's money, in my dad's house. Honestly, I think he was hanging out in America to avoid gang trouble in Asia. Also, I think my stepmom got with him because he has connections in China and Tuane, and maybe some fraud is going on. Before I got kicked out of my dad's house, my stepmom used my dad's money to invest in a couple of apartment buildings. I eventually heard, that she was renting out rooms to various mobsters slash traffickers and they basically were bordellos. This was all stuff I found out later, along with the news that she not only made big money off rents, but the mobsters were giving her a kickback on money they earned. I will say this for Barbara, she's a very beautiful woman, physically, and it's easy to see why my father was attracted to her, though if I think of her as not my stepmom, she personally does nothing for me. She often got men to do what she wanted, because she was pretty. I'm also quite certain that she gave them more than I candy alone, but aside from one very important case, I can't prove any of that. What was that case, you asked? Well I moved in with my nice aunt, who sheltered me while I went to college for a degree in computer engineering. My smaller inheritance paid for a couple of years of school. My aunt was nice to me and even though she was still taking care of her own children, she had one son who already married and had his own family, but three daughters who still lived at home and were unmarried, she didn't ask me for rent. Her own husband had passed away a long time ago, so I got to play man of the house, by taking care of the yard and fixing things like cars and computers while I lived there. After a couple of years, I lose touch with Barbara and just concede that she won. I also got a job at a computer hobby store, where I became really knowledgeable about computers. It was a good experience and though the money isn't so great, at least it's some money and I am starting to make a name for myself, in the world or least in our small city. When I say small city, I really do mean small city. It's even smaller in the sense that Chinese people in that city, tend to live all in one part of it and everyone knows one another. Eventually, I meet my own girlfriend, Kay, who is around the same age as me and is going to school to be a nurse. After Kay and I am dating a few months, I start to meet her family. She knows about my living situation, which is that I live with my aunt and that I have a mean stepmom who threw me out of my dad's house. But to this point, I never told Barbara's real name to her. So when I meet Kay's family, I meet her older brother, Mike, who is 26. Mike is Chinese like all of us, but he is very heavily tattooed and had spent some time in prison until his early 20s, because he was a banger. He worked for a landscaping company, cutting grass and all that. He is what we call in our neighborhood, a cowboy, but I don't know how accurate that translates in English, to what I am trying to say he is. Well anyway, after coming to Kay's house and seeing him around a couple of times, Mike overhears me answering one of Kay's questions about my stepmom, and Barbara's name comes up. So Mike interrupts us by asking, Oh excuse me May, hey dude, did you just say Barbara? In my neighborhood everyone calls their little sister, May. So I say, yeah, that's my stepmom. He responds with, No way. No offense, but I'm sexy timing your stepmom. So he describes how he does a lot of houses in my dad's old neighborhood, and while my stepmom's boyfriend is with his own friends playing mahjong, he, Mike, comes over and he and Barbara have sexy time. He adds that they don't use protection, because she wants a baby, and she wants it fast because she is 36 now. And her boyfriend's baby seed quality isn't good enough and too slow. Evidently, Mike has sexy time with all sorts of women in the neighborhood, and outside of it too. He brags about all the white, black and Mexican ladies he also landscapes for. I haven't really thought about my stepmom other than talking about stuff in the past, so it was interesting hearing what she was up to. I mean other than sexy timing my girlfriend's brother. Mike tells us that Barbara uses her apartment buildings as a giant cat house, where the mob tenants set up their women. Barbara never actually told him this, but he deduced it like an Asian thug version of Sherlock Holmes. He says that a lot of people he knew in prison got put in jail because of doing that. Also, that my stepmom was running for a seat for the city council, 
playing up the fact that she was a hard-working woman of color and had aspirations for reaching higher office. It's clear she wants to make herself a little empire. Kay bluntly asks her brother, if he would help us with putting my evil stepmom in jail. She had her financial accounts set up in a specific way, that made it hard to prove, that she knew what her tenants were doing in her buildings. But if the buildings were shut down, it would at least hurt Barbara's cash flow and it would put an end to the bad things happening there. Mike said that he would have kept his mouth shut, because he liked that my stepmom was basically showering him with money, in trade for his sugar honey. But since his little sister was asking for help, he was willing to forego the money. I piped up and offered to pay him, even though there was no way I could pay as much as Barbara. He said he didn't want me to pay him anything, but if I would hurt his little sister, he would take away my crown jewels. Fair enough, so we had a deal. So we came up with a plan. Mike would set up his cell phone in an out of sight place in Barbara's room, while they had sexy time. Basically creating a tape without her knowledge. Mike didn't care about his reputation in America, and had plans to leave the country anyway and go back to China, as his own father had a business opportunity for him there. The idea of being associated with such a thing on tape didn't bother him at all. Having spent time in jail and also being part of a gang subculture, he also didn't have any trouble scoring narcotics, and evidently, he had used these with Barbara in her house before. So on that specific plan day, he would also make sure to show that Barbara was eating the forbidden Skittles. He minimized his role, so that it appeared that it was Barbara who scored the narcotics. So far, that it seemed that she was actually offering them to him. He did make sure, at my suggestion, to have her say in natural conversation, what day and year it was, and that this was her passed away husband's house, and that her current boyfriend was playing mahjong at her friend's house. Furthermore, Mike added a special touch where, in the throes of sexy time, he made Barbara denounce her Taiwan boyfriend, as a weakling and a fool. For being no real man, and that only Mike was capable of making her, reach Mount Everest. Real hair-raising stuff, to the right crowd. All of it was in Chinese, but that was okay, as the audience would also be Chinese. Mike made sure that Barbara's face was clearly showed. The tape was obviously not a professionally made one, so thankfully we did not have to actually see too much, but it was very obvious what was going on. All told, the video was 20 minutes long. We made sure to edit most unimportant portions out. When I say we, I mean Mike and me, because Kay didn't want to see her own brother like that. I didn't care to see Barbara either, and thankfully I didn't really have to see any clear picture of her without garments, though it was obviously her, and she was obviously, without those. We shaved the video down to those parts where it was clearly showing Barbara's face, her doing narcotics, talking about them and offering them to Mike. Her mentioning the date, that this was her passed away husband's house. They then proceeded to have sexy time for a few frames, quite obviously, and then the cherry on top for good measure, she belittled her Taiwanese boyfriend. The relevant clip we made, was slightly less than 10 seconds long. 10 utter, destructive, seconds. A few days later, Mike went to China to meet up with his parents. A week after that, as politics go, candidates often have to make speeches in front of audiences. And Barbara, running for a seat in the city council, was no different. Nobody really cares about city council meetings, except other politicians and the few dozen people who go to such things. Reading up on her quickly, I learned that Barbara was presenting herself as a woman of high character, a business owner who had set up more than a dozen successful businesses in the area for other immigrants. So, basically stealing credit for my father's work. But back to boring political meetings. They're definitely snoozeworthy, more effective than sleeping pills. But every once in a while, something interesting happens. For example, a politician saying something only a fascist would say. Someone getting close to being assassinated, or, I don't know, an attractive candidate suddenly, randomly appearing in a movie for adults, for all to see in real time. Did you know news travels really fast in town-like cities? So, on the day that Barbara was making her little speech in front of maybe a hundred people at a local hotel conference room, the public was invited. Oh look! Her boyfriend the Mahjong King, was there too. And all of Barbara's cousins, that my dad had sponsored to America and set up for business, were there too. Nobody took notice of the young guy in dark sunglasses and beanie, sitting in the front row, holding a backpack. Even more so because the room was darkened, except for the inviting stage. Barbara was going to be the fourth speaker out of maybe six. While the first speaker made his speech, I silently slid a bazooka Bluetooth speaker out of my backpack, and put it near the stage. Such a speaker is about 20 inches tall, 8 diameter, 
and when set to maximum, can be quite loud. I tested it at home to make sure. Yep, it would do. As I predicted, the level of excitement of placing the speaker, was like as entertaining as listening to Jessica Simpson trying to rap. So it was really a trial to wait for Barbara's turn. So she finally gets on stage and talks about being a good family woman and so on. I pull out my smartphone and use its projector app, along with a homemade projector box I built at work, so that it could make a nice, big image on the close behind wall. 10 long seconds, of Barbara telling us where she was, what date it was, how delicious the Skittles are, what a cuck her boyfriend is, and, oh god, oh god, sexy time me Mikey. Nice and loud. Thanks, bazooka speaker. The audience is so stunned, I have time to loop the video and play it again. Barbara is standing there with her mouth open, eyes wide. Someone in the crowd yells out in Chinese, hey, that's Mike. Everyone knows Mike. Especially a lot of the ladies. Just as the crowd is starting to reach a crescendo, I grab my speaker and projector box, stuff them into the backpack, and slip out a side door where Kay is waiting with her car running. Before I made this getaway, I made sure to shout out. This is not a place for you Barbara. You go now. Bye bye I then went to Kay's house and we were so, so happy, that we got engaged. By that weekend, I was packed up and moved in with Kay to stay with her uncle, who lived in a big house near my new school where I am now finishing my degree. Kay is now a full registered nurse. She brings in most of the money, but soon I'll play a bigger role, too. From what my aunt tells me, Barbara and her boyfriend broke up, and by broke up, I mean she fled the city, because he literally wants to end her. She lost her bid for city council, obviously. Thanks to an anonymous tip, the activities in her apartments were also shut down. Because of Barbara's shame, lots of her relatives who owned businesses thanks to my dad lost customers, and a few have already gone out of business. The rest are failing fast. My dad's old house fell into foreclosure and now a nice western family lives there. They're the only white people on the block, so godspeed, round eyes. Barbara's gif, made the rounds on tons of people's Facebooks before it got deleted, because of community guidelines. Mike shared this trailer all over the internet with people he knows, and in our neighborhood everyone knows one another. Since it was only a few seconds, lots of people also posted it to their Instagram, before it got deleted. Barbara's life is pretty much nuked. The full-length version got posted on various sites with subscriptions, but it hasn't leaked to any free streaming services. This is due to Mike. Never misses an opportunity to make some cash. I'll end with a message for my dad. Hey dad, I forgive you for not leaving me that much, other than showing me how to be strong and to stand up for myself. That was the best inheritance of all. See you in heaven, unless this stunt makes me qualify for hell instead. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe to receive future episodes, and tickle the like button for good karma. Do you have any experiences surrounding this topic? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.